if your doctrine keeps you from saying the words I worship you Holy Ghost then you can't go there it's a disease that cuts people off midlife it only lets them go so far and no further Ghost he is God in the earth today, and you walk with him by saying words. My name is Andrew Hemstrott. Thank you for joining us. If this is your first time here. Make sure that you subscribe down below. 2 Corinthians 3 16. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, say the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. So we're turning to the Lord, and the veil is taken away. Verse 17 Now the Lord is. And the veil is taken away you understand mm -hmm. so we're turning to the Lord the veil is taken away now the Lord is what's it say spirit. that spirit so the Lord is that spirit when the veil is taken away, say this when the veil, when the veil is, taken away, is taken away the Lord is, the Lord is that, spirit. that spirit now what spirit would that be Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost oh you're saying that the spirit is Lord I'm gonna I'll, that's a lot what this message is about so just just hang with us here now the Lord is that spirit and I'm not the one making it up anyway is this is this here yes. verse 17 now the Lord is that spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is there is Liberty or where the Spirit is Lord mm -hmm. you can understand that when the Spirit is Lord over a situation mm -hmm. you would expect that situation to have Liberty or freedom mm -hmm. is that correct what if you're the situation say what if I'm the situation what if I'm and sometimes you're a situation you understand what if what if the spirit is Lord in you that situation mm -hmm. what's there gonna be freedom and victory are you getting this yeah. so where the spirit is Lord or the spirit is Lord over that or you or whatever mm -hmm. there's victory there's freedom there's Liberty verse 18 but we all with open face see open face because the veil has been taken away beholding as in a glass or a or the mirror the glory of the Lord mm -hmm. so is there some kind of glory that this spirit of the Lord might walk in mm -hmm. that's what we're beholding are you here yes. we're seeing it we've had the veil taken away we know the Lord is the spirit right now we're beholding as in a mirror his glory the glory of the Lord are changed when are we changed while we're below beholding the glory of the Lord behind the veil now just hang with me here because I'm gonna be explaining all of this stuff as we go on through this this message mm -hmm. but sometimes you just gotta dump it on people to let them know where we're going <laughs> we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image the same image of what his glory mm -hmm. from glory to the next glory is that gonna happen if the veil is still there it can't because we're, we have to behold the glory first to be changed into that glory and then we see more glory we're changed into that mm -hmm. even as by the Spirit of the Lord so we're, we'll go back to this verse of Scripture later on but the big deal here is change as you can see mm -hmm. who's changed yeah. we're changed he's not changed right we're changed from glory to glory you can't go to to glory without being changed from are you here right. it's all about change and there's a change that happens if you knew him the Holy Ghost is God you would worship him and when you worship him you're beholding him and a change happens to you mm -hmm. say a change happens to me a change happens to me. when when you're beholding him when you've had the veil taken away of who is the Lord are you here well it's all about change from to we go from something to something else repentance is a change it's a turning from one thing to another thing we go from glory to glory mm -hmm. change from mm -hmm. to something else mm -hmm. we're the ones changing this is all about change Romans 12 1 and 2 says we're changed from good to acceptable to the perfect will of God you go from the good to the acceptable to the perfect will of God all requiring change not change from God change from you as far as people have known the Holy Ghost up till now it goes as far as their religious doctrine dictates 
and no farther they're stopped there you understand Jesus even said that you make the Word of God of no effect by your traditions or your doctrines stop you off they keep you from going to where you need to go even by me saying the Spirit is Lord people will be like oh my doctrine doesn't let me go there they can't see beyond that veil they're still behind a veil That's right. you see that mm -hmm. they have known me the Holy Ghost says as far as their religious doctrine dictates and no farther very limited very limited you know God is unlimited right mm -hmm. and what we've limited him by our religious doctrine in fact uh, Psalms 78 41 says they limited the Holy One mm -hmm. who did they did mm -hmm. their doctrine whatever doctrine they're in is disallowing them to go here and have that veil removed so that they can see the Spirit of the Lord or the Spirit Lord as we're gonna get into this and they can't worship the Holy Ghost you hear that people can't worship the Holy Ghost because their doctrine won't let them where they get this doctrine from the Holy Ghost no they got it from religious men and I'm gonna show you how we got here but they got it from religious men or wrong teaching or teaching that didn't wouldn't go there mm -hmm. if your doctrine keeps you from saying the words I worship you Holy Ghost then you can't go there right well let's just see how this happens because we have millions of people that are still behind the veil that we talk about all the time here meaning behind the wrong side of the veil they haven't gone behind the veil they're on the other side of the veil they haven't seen this yet millions of people let's just see how some of this happened you all right with us first Corinthians 15 verse 3 for I delivered unto you first of all that which I received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures is that right mm -hmm. sure verse 4 and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures mm -hmm. verse 5 and that he was seen of Cephas that's Peter and then of the twelve and after that he was seen above what's that say 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain unto this present but some are falling asleep now my point here is that Jesus when he was raised from the dead rose from the dead he went and saw 500 people plus mm -hmm. are you here yes. this had to be before he went up into heaven and sat down on the right hand of the Father you understand mm -hmm. so he had 500 disciples look it said that brethren he was seen above 500 brethren that means more than 500 brethren at once and that was just one time we don't he could have seen more mm -hmm. right? right pretty obvious he was raised from the dead he had 500 witnesses to something Acts chapter 1 verse 2 until the day in which he was taken up Jesus mm -hmm. after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the Apostles whom he had chosen to whom he also showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God I just showed you a scripture that that wasn't just to the Apostles it was to over 500 brethren mm -hmm. verse 4 and being assembled together with them commanded them say commanded them commanded what does that sound like a commandment yeah. right was he must have been emphatic about it to make a commandment over it Jesus raised from the dead standing in front of them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the Father which he saith you have heard of me for John truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence what did Jesus command them not to go anywhere don't go anywhere don't do anything don't tell anybody you understand yes. if I were to go at that point and start telling people about Jesus's resurrection all right death burial and resurrection how he bore their sins mm -hmm. would I be following what Jesus told me to do no. I would be breaking the first commandment mm -hmm. of what Jesus said before he ascended yes. are you here and being assembled together with them verse 4 commanded them that they should not depart don't go away from Jerusalem but wait 
for the promise of the father just read down a little bit there we see that jesus went up verse 11 down to verse 15 and in those days peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of the names together was about 120. there was 120. Mm -hmm. say there was 120. There was 120. how many were that we know of did jesus actually appear to and stand in front of and talk to them and you know if he's commanding here this wasn't the first time he commanded it he would have been telling everybody that he rose again and spoke to don't go say don't go. don't go do you have a problem do you understand that am i the only one who understands that or does everybody else just not understand that when somebody tells you not to go what do you do you don't go you, don't go. you not go yeah. well here we have 120 out of the 500 I mean 380 you could say the lion's share of them weren't there on the day of Pentecost yeah. they didn't wait say they didn't wait. they didn't wait would they still have testimony of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus oh yeah because he appeared to them are you here yes. but they didn't wait if they didn't wait they must have gone yeah. well they didn't wait for frankly the beginning of the New Testament age the age of the Holy Ghost so if they're out doing something sans Holy Ghost or without the Holy Ghost are they following the will of Jesus no so let's just see how this plays out go to Acts chapter 16 you mad at me yet well just hold on Acts chapter 16 verse 6 now when they were gone throughout Pergia and the region of Galatia we've heard of Galatia right we have a book of the Galatians and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia God wouldn't forbid you to preach the word anywhere right here it says they were forbidden you understand what that means yes. don't do it don't go there it's the same thing are you here yes. they were forbidden to preach the word in Asia well Asia had to do with the Corinthians Asia was specifically Ephesus God the Holy Ghost told Paul don't go to Ephesus mm -hmm. go to chapter 19 chapter 19 verse 1 and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth Paul had and again now I didn't take you to that verse of Scripture but there was a time when the Holy Spirit told Paul now he can go mm -hmm. and preach there do you understand mm -hmm. So here he's there he's going over there now and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth having Paul having passed through the upper coasts came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples well wait a minute Paul's only now being told by the Holy Ghost he can go into Ephesus how could he possibly get there and find disciples somebody went without the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. say somebody went, somebody went. Without, the without the Holy Ghost they didn't wait for the Holy Ghost did they no. Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples verse 2 and he said unto them have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed and they said unto him we've not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost And he goes well, well well then what then were you baptized unto and he said unto John's baptism and then he went and straightened them out are you here mm -hmm. well how could this be it could be because somebody went without receiving the Holy Ghost and therefore their doctrine and the things they were telling people mm -hmm. weren't to be baptized in the Holy Ghost what would he be baptized into something else you understand and so they were brought up in this other way let's read back and we'll see what happened here is this fun yet mm -hmm. Acts chapter 18 and verse 24 and a certain Jew named Apollos born in Al at Alexandria an eloquent man say an eloquent man. an eloquent man that means he was very convincing he could say things in a convincing way in man's wisdom an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures did it say he was mighty in the Holy Ghost no mighty in the scriptures and eloquent came to Ephesus 
this man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit it doesn't say fervent in the Holy Ghost it's just fervent in spirit which means he was very zealous mm -hmm. you understand yes he was not in the spirit because he would have been preaching about the spirit if he was fervent in the spirit he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord knowing only the baptism of John verse 26 and he began to speak boldly in the synagogue which when Aquila and Priscilla had heard they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly mm -hmm. they're like oh this is this is the whole ball of wax here mm -hmm. verse 27 and when he was disposed to pass into Achaia the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him who when he was come helped them much which had believed through grace have the word grace here for he pub he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ mm -hmm. he was telling people that Jesus was Christ showing them through the scriptures and getting them baptized unto John's baptism which was into water are you here yes. are you seeing a problem mm -hmm. all right because then when Paul comes around he goes he noticed something's wrong and he says have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe they said we haven't even heard whether there be one mm -hmm. how could you not hear whether there be one mm -hmm. so we see you could call Apollos the original Baptist you know thank God for the Baptists but I'm gonna try to help you out they started out on the wrong foot they were supposed to not go until they received the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. And you understand the Holy Ghost is the teacher and here you have someone out expounding mightily the scriptures mm -hmm. without the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. started off on the wrong foot and frankly in disobedience to what Jesus specifically told them to do now I'm not getting down on the Baptists you understand that but they preach that exact same thing that Apollos was preaching don't they salvation by grace that Jesus is the Christ and you should be baptized the way John baptized people mm -hmm. do they talk about the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. very little and if they do it's in the context of the Baptist doctrine mm -hmm. that's what I'm trying to get you to cross today is if you hold on to that Baptist doctrine and even if you try to add some Holy Ghost on top of it it's gonna limit you from actually having that veil removed and worshiping the Holy Ghost as God mm -hmm. and it's built into so many it's not just the Baptist you can say almost every evangelical say evangelical. evangelical every evangelical church has the same basic doctrine which will limit them mm -hmm. even if they receive the Holy Ghost was speaking in other tongues it's their doctrine that won't let them go here right. here where you say here in worshiping the Holy Ghost as the Living God mm -hmm. why because they started off on the wrong foot mm -hmm. you ever march with P I used to be in a marching band if you started off on the wrong foot it was difficult you look first of all you were you look weird compared to everybody else but it was difficult to switch back up you had to do a little hop skip and a jump before you got back on the right marching right so even if they receive the Holy Ghost they started off wrongly most you can consider evangelical Baptist types and then they just add the Holy Ghost to it and it's why they can't understand when we sit there and say no the Holy Ghost is God and you should worship him mm -hmm. it's because their doctrine has brought them up to a place where oh okay well we receive the Holy Ghost even if they speak in tongues they're not receive they're not receiving him correctly because they ran off on the wrong foot mm -hmm. I had a very precious preacher someone that I look up to and you know I've listened to a lot of his stuff he said he came out from among the Baptists that it got the left foot of fellowship when he received the Holy Ghost but he went on about how his doctrine didn't change at all his doctrine didn't change he just added the Holy Ghost to it I'm telling you that's what everybody does their doctrine doesn't change they just add the Holy Ghost to it it doesn't work it'll never get you here you'll get choked off is this making sense 
because a radical change has to take place when you begin to worship the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and we know he's the teacher he'll teach you the beginning things don't go mm -hmm. unless yes. Jesus said don't go but they go mm -hmm. don't they when people say oh well I'd never change my doctrine you're not gonna get me to change my doctrine you now I was thinking about that people go to let's say a Bible college right mm -hmm. why did they go to the Bible college to learn doctrine mm -hmm. who who how are they learning this doctrine somebody's teaching them mm -hmm. be it'd be foolish to say I'm not gonna change my doctrine <coughs> before you go to a Bible college right, right why because the teachers there will instruct you more perfectly in what you should be mm -hmm. and how you're supposed to interpret it I don't recommend it because most of them will just talk you right out of the things I'm talking about uh -huh. but the Holy Ghost is the ultimate teacher he's why Jesus said don't go without him he'll instruct you in the things of God he'll teach you all the truth and all the truth means the beginning truths not just the second and third and fourth truth the beginning truths how you're supposed to go mm -hmm. you can go okay well why did Jesus come to forgive your sins sure no one would no one would deny that why did Jesus come to get to gain heaven as an eternal home no one would deny that I'm not denying that but that's not the number one reason Jesus came mm -hmm. let's read his words Acts chapter 1 verse 4 and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but receive forgiveness of sins and then when you die you'll go to heaven is that what he said no he said but wait for the promise of the father which he saith you've heard of me this is what you've heard about me mm -hmm. Jesus raised from the dead said this is what you've heard about me look at what he says John truly baptized with water we have that other guy going out baptizing unto John mm -hmm. right John truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence mm -hmm. baptized meaning fully immersed into the person of the Holy Ghost who is God in the earth today not many days hence mm -hmm. yes. and he will teach you all things he will show you things to come are you here yes. so why Jesus come forgive sin sure heaven is an eternal home sure why not mm -hmm. what he said here he came to prepare a way so that you could receive God in the earth today mm -hmm. no one up till that point could mm -hmm. way back from Adam when he walked with the Spirit of God mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. then Jesus the second Adam made the way for God himself to come into the earth and walk with you his name is the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. don't leave without this message mm -hmm. do you see that's the message he was saying mm -hmm. and yet they ran off and here Paul he just comes up to those people and says have you received the Holy Ghost it was the first thing he said to them and Luke 3 16 says the same thing John was talking about Jesus one that comes after me is greater he shall baptize you in the Holy Ghost dr. Ed Dufresne before he went home to be with the Lord had a vision of the Lord Jesus and Jesus said to him they want me Jesus they want me but they don't want the another that I sent and we see that today people want Jesus but they don't want the another that Jesus sent we saw more than half of the people running off with the message without waiting to receive the another that he sent mm -hmm. now let me ask you a question if I just run off sans Holy Ghost or without the Holy Ghost is my doctrine gonna be right no. it can't possibly be because he's the one who's gonna teach you the doctrine does this make sense yeah. I can be mighty I can be convincing there's a lot of mighty convincing people that preach those things but if they didn't start out with the Holy Ghost receiving him being fully immersed into him as God their doctrine is gonna be off eventually it's gonna be off and eventually it'll keep them from going where they need to go which is change from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord mm -hmm. we'll continue on here you mad yet no. I'll keep on the plague has continued unto this day 
it's a plague it decimates it destroys it's infecting almost all of the body of Christ it disallows people from going here what I'm talking about when I say I worship you Holy Ghost you are God in the earth today their doctrine because it's founded on the wrong thing won't let them go here are you are you seeing this yeah. It's, it's a disease I've called it a plague it's infecting almost all of the body of Christ mm -hmm. yell at me if you want it's a disease that cuts people off midlife it only lets them go so far and no further are you seeing this yes. but we must go further that's the plan we're supposed to go from glory to glory to glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord or the Spirit as Lord mm -hmm. and if they can't go here because that veil is still there not letting them see the Holy Ghost for who he is and I'm not just talking about you keeping your old doctrine and adding some Holy Ghost to it which is what almost everybody does and they can only go so far right. and almost none of them will ever say the words I worship you Holy Ghost out their mouth why is that because their doctrine disallows it mm -hmm. so we have to go farther they are veil blocked second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away mm -hmm. verse 17 now the Lord is mm -hmm. that spirit so the veils taken away <laughs> take the spirit right now the Lord is that spirit the Greek actually says where now the Spirit Lord is mm -hmm. the Spirit Lord say that the Spirit Lord, the Spirit Lord. who's the Spirit Lord Holy, Holy Ghost is the Spirit Lord how can you possibly get to that revelation thinking all these other things your old doctrine won't allow you to go here to have the Spirit Lord but we are beholding let's read on here but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of who the, Lord. the Spirit Lord yeah. the, he's glorious by the way we're beholding him when we worship him we're beholding him yes. and he's the Spirit Lord and we're changed from glory to glory by the Spirit Lord now I'm not I'm gonna get into this a little bit later but we have that word in our English language that's called of that we we think that it's a possessive thing so the chair of me would be that's my chair I own that it's not me it's it's my chair. we understand that right in English those words are not in Greek and they're not in the Hebrew the Spirit Lord mm -hmm. say the Spirit Lord the Spirit it's different than the Spirit of the Lord that's what's blocking them they've been taught this whole doctrine that the Spirit is the Spirit of the Lord mm -hmm. so that's why I can just add some of his spirit to my things and some have more some have less but you can't add more and more and ever have him be the Spirit Lord with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit Lord who we're changed by the Spirit Lord by beholding you understand what beholding is right looking at his glory now you can't look at him and his glory if you don't know who he is and therefore you can't be changed are you seeing this yes. if according to this scripture I'm changed from beholding the glory of the Spirit Lord it's impossible for me to be changed from one glory to the next glory by the Spirit Lord without beholding him without knowing him so you can't look at him if you don't know who he is and you can't know him if you don't look at him and you can't see him if he's behind a veil that disallows you from going there so we're changed by beholding the glory of the Spirit Lord are you here because yes. <laughs> if you're there you're a long ways we're changed by beholding the glory of the Spirit Lord mm -hmm. 
who's the spirit lord the holy ghost who came in the earth it's his dispensation he's god in the earth today and we walk with him by saying words mm -hmm. how can you know him how can you behold him if you don't know who he is how can you worship him if you don't know who he is psalms 96 look at verse 9 oh worship the lord now in our day what are we talking about holy ghost, holy ghost now the lord is that spirit mm -hmm. right the spirit lord oh worship the lord in the beauty of holiness fear before him all the earth why all the earth that's where he is right. are we supposed to worship the spirit lord yes. according to this verse of scripture and look say in the beauty say beauty. beauty the beauty of holiness now i've talked about holiness before but beauty here indicates what when do you say something's beautiful when you look at it right. you have to see it so here it says worship the lord in the beauty my looking at mm -hmm. him say him yeah. now i preach often on the person of the holy ghost he's a person he's a him mm -hmm. right yeah. he's the one that jesus sent to be with us mm -hmm. He is God he is a spirit God is a spirit he's the Spirit Lord worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness and it says we're changed by beholding him by looking at him so we're changed by beholding the glory of the Lord the Spirit Lord we worship him in the beauty of holiness beauty indicates looking beholding and seeing where do we look behold and see behind the veil when we can look behold and see who he is Moses in exit Exodus 33 19 said show me your glory he wanted to see it mm -hmm. say he wanted to see it yeah, and then he was changed by beholding it remember and then he came down this is where the whole veil thing took place he came down from the mountain had to put a veil on his face mm -hmm. why because he saw the glory yes. you see it first you got to see it first have you ever heard anybody go oh I see it mm -hmm. yeah. I see it now mm -hmm. you got to have that you got to have that revelation you got to go oh I see it now what do you see now behind the veil I see it now the Spirit is Lord mm -hmm. the veil is taken away now the Lord is that Spirit what Spirit Holy Ghost are you getting this yes. I see it now the Spirit is Lord it's unveiled when I take the veil away you go I see it you got to see it first and then begin beholding him mm -hmm. as God is this making sense yes. what happens when you do that you begin to change mm -hmm. can you testify to this mm -hmm. when you start worshiping the Holy Ghost you begin to change I read off several testimonies of people I began to change as I began worshiping the Holy Ghost why would that be that's what the scripture says behind the veil you're worshiping him you're seeing him as he is and you're changed I call this the law of worship you become what you behold you become like what you behold we're changed by beholding him and his glory from glory to glory by the Spirit Lord so we with open face when we're worshiping him him the Holy Ghost with open face beholding when you're open-faced you're exposed right mm -hmm. you're exposing yourself to him and his glory mm -hmm. worship exposes you in a way that nothing else will mm -hmm. well we were talking about that earlier if you could just get people to worship the Holy Ghost he will be able to change all of this stuff he will be able to reorganize their doctrine that they got all squirrely with just worship the Holy Ghost. just say I worship you Holy Ghost and do it every day and he'll begin to reorganize all of that stuff do you recognize that there's a change taking place I do I testify to it when I use the words I worship you Holy Ghost I what do you mean I go I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost I recognize that there's a change happening anybody who worships the Holy Ghost will be changed I'm telling you that and you're changed from what glory mm -hmm. it's a glory 
it is a glory when you worship the Holy Ghost you're it is a glory and you're changed from that to the next glory are you getting this mm -hmm. it's why it's probably why the devil has been so adamant against this because when people go behind the veil and start worshiping the living God who is the Holy Ghost the Spirit Lord in the earth today they begin to be changed that's right. and that's where we're going Amen. that's how we get out of here you understand yeah. that's part of the new manifestation of the Spirit it's the glory it's doing things for you not you doing things it's doing things for you the glory is mm -hmm. are you here yeah. It's changing you. You're changed from it to it. Amen. It's transformative. Mm -hmm. What is worshiping the Holy Ghost? Transformative. It transforms you from good to acceptable to perfect. Mm -hmm. You can't get there without this. Right. But these things are only for those who worship the Spirit Lord, mm -hmm. or the Lord, the Spirit, or the Spirit as Lord. You know how upsetting this is to people and their doctrine they don't like it they don't want to go here mm -hmm. these things are only for those who worship the Spirit Lord God is a spirit and they that worship him are you here yes. by the name Spirit Lord they have not known me they only know him by the things their doctrine allows so I challenge you to use the words the Spirit Lord by the name Spirit Lord they have not known me Enoch knew me as the Lord of Spirits mm -hmm. talking about the Holy Ghost Adam knew me as the Spirit Lord he walked with him in the cool of the day the cool of the day means in the spirit mm -hmm. he was the Spirit Lord now Enoch was a type of the last day church where are we supposed to go where are we now we're in the last day we're like Enoch in the last day right yeah. He was taken was not for God took him mm -hmm. who took him Holy Ghost the Spirit Lord he walked around with the Spirit as Lord mm -hmm. you know that don't don't criticize me you can't get here without what Jesus did but Jesus said don't go without him mm -hmm. the Spirit Lord right. you all right with this yeah. what if you get the beginning wrong mm -hmm. what is gonna happen you're gonna have the rest of it wrong they said well what if they got the beginning wrong in the book of Acts what are they gonna get the rest of it wrong it's gonna be off and they'll never be able to get where they're going mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 1 let's read verse 1 in the beginning God the Greek I mean the Hebrew word is Elohim in the beginning Elohim God created the heaven and the earth you got a problem with that no, no that seems right verse 2 and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters mm -hmm. that word of does not exist in the Hebrew it says the Spirit God God is a spirit Jesus said who was it the Spirit God moved mm -hmm. and we see this as we go on here this is the book of uh, continuing revelation you build revelation upon revelation upon revelation right the first thing we knew in verse 1 was just that God Elohim created everything mm -hmm. then he adds to that that he's a spirit God yes. who is a spirit God Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost can you agree with me say this the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. is a spirit, is a spirit. God. God is he Lord of anything yeah we talk about Lord of hosts in the Hebrew is Lord of hope what host do you think he's Lord of the spirits mm -hmm. Enoch called him Lord of spirits there's no of between spirit and God he's the spirit God it's that of where we get religious and we disqualify ourselves from worshiping him as God he's the spirit God not God's spirit possessive are you here it's not God's spirit but God who is a spirit mm -hmm. you can see that Genesis verse 2 mm -hmm. chapter 1 he's the spirit God he's not God's spirit but a but God who is a spirit 
that spirit who is God you know you got to keep saying this and the reason is because many of myself included we were brought up in this old religious thinking that keeps us from going here that the spirit is God and is to be worshiped but when the veil is taken away now the Lord is that spirit that's the veil taken away if I came up and asked you who the Lord is today in the earth if you say that spirit I know the veil's taken away if you don't say that spirit then you still got a veil there that built up by religious thinking mm -hmm. he's the one Jesus sent he's the spirit God that's behind the veil worship him and he begins to change you he changes your doctrine can you confess to this mm -hmm. that's a change of doctrine well I would never have my doctrine changed he will change your doctrine mm -hmm. your doctrine shouldn't have been what it is in the first place if you had not left without him worship him and he will change you John 4 22 says God is a spirit and they that worship him say him him, him must worship him I got that kind of jumped out at me today must worship him mm. does your Bible say that yeah must worship him you must worship him him who him the spirit that is God mm -hmm. and when you do worship him he'll begin to change you what's he change you from one glory to the next that is a change that is a glory worshiping him because you're seeing him for who he is and he begins to change you from glory to glory let me pray for you Holy Ghost I thank you for blessing these people today and opening their ears I thank you for changing their doctrine and lifting them up out of the mire out of that plague out of that sickness that is in the body of Christ today we rebuke it in Jesus name and I thank you Holy Ghost that all over the world people are beginning to worship you as God and we will cover the earth with you in your glory from end to end top to bottom and all around it in Jesus name I thank you for it amen, amen. you have a tithe or an offering mm -hmm. hold it in your hand I've been more and more led to stop praying about especially finances let's start saying about it mm -hmm. say this after me Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. I, say, I say over this offering over this, offering, over this, tithe, over this tithe it shall increase, it shall increase and, be and be a blessing and I shall have abundance in my bank accounts and no lack and I am blessed so blessed it's undeniable the blessing comes on me and overtakes me and everything that I put my hand unto prospers in Jesus name amen is in heaven Jesus at his right hand your God in the earth to